Hello and welcome to Monday's Look North in the headlines tonight. The end of an era. The official receiver is closing down the red car blast furnace. I've got away with murder, the government. I've got away with murder. Well, SSI haven't covered themselves in glory in this. 3 p.m. 12th of October 2015 marked the end of steel making on Teesside. Heartbreak. Personally, absolutely. I can't really talk about it. Sorry. I think it's going to be a bleak, bleak winter for Teesside. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest employer in this area with 2,000 men plus 1,000 contractors. Where's the Northern Powerhouse helping us out? Isn't it? 2015, disastrous um, moment for, for Teesside and for the, for the steel industry. You know, I remember very well uh, the, uh, uh, the occasions we were in the uh, chamber of the House of Commons pleading for more time and I was dealing with Anna Subri and with uh, Sajid Javid. Um, pleading with them to try to afford a, a window of opportunity for other bidders to come along and try to save the, save the steelworks and it was all for nothing. Viscerally and historically steel making was so important to us but it was the economic damage that it was going to cause. The, the closure of SSI, so seven years ago uh, we had that devastating news in October where uh, 3,000 jobs lost overnight, uh, 6,000 um, in, in the grand scheme of things. It, once that blast furnace uh, uh, cools down, we will never see it uh, refired. Um, and that came to be true, so it, it was a devastating time. Um, and, I, I, and I think everybody felt it, felt the enormity of the decision to, to close the works, uh, which is totally devastating. Um, but I, I bitterly regret to this day that this government didn't act more proactively there was a lot of false promises were made to us at the time. Yeah. They were going to bring different plans and to try and keep the plant open. But the way they did the closure was brutal. I was actually working on the Friday, the 2nd of October, when it closed. And all we got was a phone call. Go home. Yeah. I want it tomorrow. We don't come back. And that was, that was the way it was. When, when the government said we're going to provide this and that to help the stay industry, do you think it was just lies or do you think that actually meant what was said but just couldn't deliver it for political reasons? I think you've answered that yourself, it was lies. Yeah. They had no intention of helping us, yeah. did they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, with a lot of, not only the steel industry, but other industries in Europe, other countries have found ways around these so-called yeah. rules. But we, we're, we're like a rules-based country. Oh, we can't disobey what the EU says. Yeah, that's the thing. That, but that was their excuse. Perceived. We you all know, abide yeah. by the rules. Uh, no, but that was and, their and excuse. And a lot of the time to the detriment of people in this country, which is think, and they, but there, they bend them to suit the needs. Yeah, I think they, they, they see their own, some of their own industries go at the wall yeah. just because there's a set of rules in place yeah. where we would. Yes. Super said she wasn't allowed to, didn't she? she come up here. Yeah. She wasn't allowed to. Was well, that's Fantastic. nonsense because I went to Italy to, I went to see the trade unions, FIOM and uh, CGIL, I think it was, and there was a plant uh, the Ilva plant and um, that the Italian government did interfere. The Italians found a way around it so surely our government could have as well um, but I, I, equally though I think you know when we were members of the European Union we played by the rules um, and, and one of the biggest reasons why areas like ours voted to leave the European Union is because they saw a club where we played by the rules and lots of other people didn't um, so I would argue that probably the government was trying to play by the rules and whether or not the Italians were doing the same, I'm not sure. No. Teesside Works has got a deep water port, it's got good rail access, it's got good road access. There's no reason at all why they should not be able to redevelop that site and attract other industries. Yeah. Yeah. It's got everything. Behind me there, there's, uh, we've got sea of wind coming in. Uh, bring in two and a half thousand jobs. We've got GE Renewables bringing in two and a half thousand jobs. We've got Net Zero Teesside, new hydrogen production. All of these different things, world leaders uh, in green technology, um, and that's what's going to be the next chapter for our industrial future on Teesside. They probably talk about levelling up. Yeah. I, well, I do wish they that that would, would happen. We need to see that uh, change in the and the dynamic. Why was taxpayer money good enough to help uh, build the banks out but not for the steel industry in this area? 
Well, you could ask Gordon Brown that because he was the one who built the banks up. Yeah. Why do you, why do you think that taxpayer money was spent building banks up and not in the Teesside area? Well, as I say, you, know, you, you interviewed Andy McDonald. Have a conversation with the Labour government about why they chose to build the banks out with taxpayers' money because it wasn't the Conservative government that did yeah, that. I but that. I, would, I, would, I would equally argue that actually, you know, there's, I think often we fall into this trap of saying, you know, well, we bailed the banks out. Didn't we? But, but ultimately, what does bailing the banks out mean? Bailing the banks out means that your mum and dad actually still have money in their bank account. I met a lot of good people in the steel industry. Met a lot of good lads, weren't we? A lot of happy times, funny times.